Hello friends, welcome back. I'm excited to announce this new mini series of videos. I'm not sure how many it's gonna be. We might end up doing lots of them. Basically the topic that I wanna cover in these videos is how to paint more expressively. I'm gonna be using lots of different mediums uh, like watercolor, gouache, ink, mixed media. More than happy to take suggestions as well. But each video will be around six minutes. I'll just kind of talk you through my process and maybe give you guys ideas for how you can paint more expressively. And if you have any reference photos that you want to send me, if I think that it'll work, I will paint it with your permission, of course. But hopefully this will help us grow as a community and stay inspired to paint expressively. So let's get into the video. I want to show you how I created this gouache landscape using slightly unconventional techniques. It's a good idea to keep a photography folder ready to go so that when you do feel inspired to paint, you don't waste too much time on the internet searching for a good reference. If you want to use this reference photo and paint with me, you can grab it in the link that's in the description. We're going to use our sketchbook today. And in order to use our palette knife like this to scrape away the paint, we're gonna need a slippery surface. So I'm going to seal this page with acrylic paint. It's not my favorite surface to paint on, but it works really well for this technique. So once you do that, we can go ahead and let it dry. If you wanna know what materials I use today, check out the description below the video. When you're painting on top of the acrylic, you'll notice really quickly that if any water gets into your brush, that the gouache is going to just kind of slide around awkwardly on the acrylic. So what we need to do is lay in our base layer, sort of a thin layer, and then we're going to build up our, our more detailed layers on top of that. Confession time. At this point in the painting, I was getting really annoyed and kind of disgusted with how it was looking on top of the acrylic. So just know that that is normal. It's part of the process and you just have to work through it. Just so you guys know, this is a shorter version of the video. If you want the full length video, you can go check out my Patreon and I'm also uploading tutorials to Gumroad now. So there's more information in the description below the channel. One of the things that will help you paint more expressively is getting over the idea of perfection. And perfection can mean different things to different people. But I think a lot of times with painting, we get obsessed with the idea that this, if you're painting a gradient, it has to be absolutely perfectly smooth and perfectly blended. There can't be any brush strokes or streakiness. But the problem with that mentality is that it ends up looking very unrealistic as well as boring if every single section of your painting is perfectly smooth and blended. But oftentimes expressive paintings do reveal the brush strokes and evidence of the artist at work very clearly. So if you look at some of your favorite expressive paintings, you'll probably be able to pick out where the artist decided to leave things more raw and loose. And I personally find that to be some of the most interesting areas of a painting. And now that we're going into our second layer, we can start building up some of the details. So I'm going to start by using a little bit more of a highlight tone for the mountains. And that's a mixture of my blue, red, well, which is technically rose and gray, which will help lighten it up a little bit. And it'll really make that first shadow layer recede into the distance. So this is how we start building up the depth of our mountains. Try not to spend too much time obsessing over every the placement of every single brush stroke. We want it to be still pretty loose. And you can do that by either giving yourself a time limit or giving yourself a brush stroke limit. So telling yourself you're only allowed 10 or 20 brush strokes. I'm slowly introducing warmer tones into the base of the mountain and that will kind of bridge the mountain with the foreground just a little bit. And now for the fun part, grab a palette knife and start picking up a mixture of a brownish orange tone and your green and start sweeping it back and forth over the foreground. And the goal is to let the paint release onto the page very sporadically. So we don't want solid streaks of color. We just want little 
pieces, little patches of color here and there. Uh, the textured paper does a pretty good job of keeping our brush strokes from getting too solid, but if you accidentally put too much down in one area and it looks too solid, you can always just wipe it off. The beauty of gouache is that it, it's always workable. Once you're happy with that foreground, it's time to start scratching. So if you turn the palette knife to the side, you'll get really, really thin scratches. If you face your palette knife directly onto the painting and scrape, you'll get slightly thicker lines. So kind of play with it, go back and forth and see what works for you. And that's about it. In total, this painting took me about 15 minutes uh, working rather quickly and loosely, and I hope that it inspires you to try the same thing. Don't forget to leave a comment with your suggestions for future topics for this mini-series, and I will see you guys again soon!